Hello, welcome to Bad at Board Games. My name is Brad Blake, and I'm Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today, we're going to be talking about a game. I don't know where I put the game. One second. Horseless Carriage. Can you see it? I don't know which way to point the thing. This is a new setup. I'm going to try a few different things today. Hopefully you like it. Stick around to the end. Find out what my BGG rating of this game is. Is it too hard? Is it too bland? Or is it amazing in all its blandness, hardness, happy kinds of things? I'll go over my BGG rating. I'll go over the value rating. Go over a few other things. You might want to stick around. Maybe it'll be fun. <laughs> let's get right to it. So let's talk about the theme. The theme is the early cars. And if you know me, I like cars. I like manufacturing. You know, it's, it's kind of up my alley. So that definitely like drew me in to this game. So the splatter aspect of it was like, I don't know. <laughs> They're going to be too heavy for me. Um, yeah, I can play some Lacertas, but you know, splatter almost seems like a different level of, of game. And is it interesting enough or, you know, am I going to be like too scared of it or something like that? Right. So we've got all the early ages where cars didn't even have brakes. They had no safety systems, like putting a tank of gas or, you know, like a gas can in the back was like how you extended the, the, the range of the cars. <laughs> so not just making them faster. They didn't even have steering wheels. Sometimes the steering wheel, I think, I believe was like the brake, you know, and things that we just take for granted now, <laughs> but all that stuff did not exist. So you're thrown back in time and you're supposed to be making these cars and selling them to the market. So you've got this economic side and you've got this factory side and it's got a few and interesting quirks that go along with the game. So that's the theme in a nutshell. It's uh, kind of fun. The designers of a horseless carriage are Joris Rusinga and Jerome Doman. I'm sorry if I pronounced your names wrong. Art by Jan Lipinski. Publishers, Splatter Games. Horseless Carriage is a three to five player game. That's right. You need three players to play this beast. And it plays in a whopping three to four hours. <laughs> Let's see if that's a con or a pro at the end. <laughs> the appearance is bland on top of bland on top of more bland. And... I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. And I know Tom Vassell hates it. He's like, ugly games for bad games. And I completely disagree in this case. It's just like there was something about it as I was opening the box and playing around with it and all these kinds of things. It was just like, I, why do I like this? I like good looking games. I like games that have been, well, you know, thought out as far as the design and everything. And I was just like... I actually like this. It's the blandest board I've ever seen. <laughs> it's white with some black on the board. And you have factories that have black tiles that you put some kind of not black tiles on top of them. <laughs> and I like it. Why? What's wrong with me? I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I like it. <laughs> so the mechanics of the games, it's splatter. It's going to be a hard, heavy game. And there's a lot going on individually. They're not too difficult. However, as you're looking at the holistic nature and how they all like, you know, bring themselves together, that's where it gets complicated. And it's like, how far can you look into the future? It's a strategic game, not a lot of tactics. You can see what's coming depending on how people are playing, but it's, do you have the foresight and can you look far enough ahead to be able to anticipate one some? what people are doing and how the game's going to unfold. It's so deep that it's hard to look that far in the strategy. So it's definitely not tactical. You also have mechanics that are about pattern building and that's to do with your factory and there's some polyomino work involved in that, but the patterns are mainly this part needs to go with this part that needs to connect to this part and you can you can branch out and do different things. So the reds need to attach to the reds and the blues need to go to the blues that help generate your technology and your trees that you have. 
which leads into tech trees. So all of those things allow you to have more technology as you're building up your cars. Are you going to have four blues, three reds, a couple yellows, and a green? And all of that makes sense as you start to play the game, but that's we're going to boil it down to there's just different colors in the game with your tech trees. You get to buy things, and you don't have to pay for them. You just have to try to fit them in your, in your factory, and your factory space gets small quick. You don't want to fill up your factory too fast because you don't know which way the game's going, but you want to fill it up enough that you have all the safety items or all the speed or depending on what's out on the board at any given time at the beginning and you need to be able to sell your cars and it, all this space just gets taken up so quickly. It, it's just this really, really tight mechanic <laughs> that's going on in the game. <laughs> so I was kind of like, eh, I'm, I'm just not going to get it. Um, but then, you know, my birthday came around and my wife got it for me and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And like, you know, and I had to learn and, you know, force people to play it with me, right? So we got a four-player game in, and I think I taught it pretty well. I would say we probably got 90% of the, the rules right, and everything was, was going pretty good. And then something sad happened. Jamon, in like the third turn, he, he just sold like a billion cars and, and took the lead. It was... It really, really made me sad. I, I need a moment. Anyway, it's a, it was a fun game. We, we got it played and taught, and overall, the total time took about a little over three hours. It really, I, I was surprised. I thought it was going to be four players, going to be solidly into the three plus hour kind of time frame, and even after, after scoring. I would say it was a good three-hour game, probably three and a half hours with the teach, which all in all really wasn't that bad. Um, and I think I think we all enjoyed it. Jamon got first. I came in second. Ashby probably could have taken the win from me. I don't know if he was being nice or just decided to go into a different spot when he was selling his cars, but um, that allowed me to like eke out a win. And then, um, but we all got over a hundred, and so. Surprisingly, like the you know the points kind of like picked up quite a bit, um, but Jamon was able to capitalize. He had more dealerships and he was able to sell more cars. And I think it was the second or third round. It was like, and then we we were all kind of playing catch up. I was he was selling to the low market. I was trying to then race the market upward and make the cheap cars not worth as much. And I was trying to sell to the the expensive market and try to get to the top right by the end of the game. And um, that's kind of, that's what pulled me forward toward the end. So there's definitely different ways to play the game um, and, and how, you, how you move things around. So, so that's my story about that. So let's, let's talk about some pros and cons. So we're gonna get into some of the cons. Let's just take a look at I, how I fucked this up. Here's a con. So, it's fiddly. <laughs> fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. There are lots of boards. Lots of boards. There are lots of chits. Lots of cubes. Lots of cars. All the player pieces. I basically tried to make it so that if for every person that's playing it, I've I've put all the little chits for each player in a bag. So this isn't the starting player thing, this is the market for building your factory. And I've taken all the player stuff and put them in their bags. So I basically get to take that. I know if three people are playing, five people are playing. Makes it a little bit easier to get out. It has a lot of chits. Setting this up and taking it down Take a long time. And if you like an organized board when you play, mm -mm, this is not the game for you. <laughs> it's definitely a con. It's like, wow, there's just so much. It takes up with four players. We, I was using a, a whole table. It was left to right, putting stuff on my side and on their side and making sure everybody could reach things and see things. And it's a table hog. And you need space for your, for your factory. So that's a con. 
Another con people complained about is on all of these little pieces here, there's hash markings, and they're supposed to match the hash markings that are on your part. That matters. <laughs> However, the colors matter too. So we couldn't find some of the hash markings that went with the different pieces. So they don't have all the little hash marks. And so for, for some people in the group, it was like, that was annoying. They like went through all of them trying to find the right piece to go with the right part versus just the color. So it was the color and the hash mark trying to match. In the end, just pick the color. Don't worry about the hash marks for these little tokens. So be aware of that. <laughs> the other con and gameplay, I like it, but it's still a bit of a mess. These things are kind of cool. You get to place them down on the board and everybody's gets to sell within their little market segment. So this, these represent which segment of the market that you can sell to. And if there aren't any cars in there anymore, then, you know, the market's depleted and you can't sell. But then trying to take them all off the board without making all these little token chits that are supposed to stay in the specific spot, not move around, <laughs> it is like, like undoing origami. Because you, all the players get to lay those tiles one at a time over the top of each other. So, like which ones are which and which one's on top then oh this one's bigger <laughs> it's a mess <laughs> that's another con um so we've got set up the i wish they could have done something better with these as well so this tells you like how many technologies you need and they're on the baseboard but then as you move technologies further you might need to pull these out i almost wish that it just like stopped and been like okay this is the max number of technologies. I understand probably from a game mechanic thing what they were doing, but it's like one more thing. One more thing you have to add to the board. So those are a few of my cons. Just just be aware that this this is a commitment. The other con really is that it can only play three players. So you're three, four, five players, and I understand why they did that. I don't think at two it would be all that much fun because you don't have as, enough competition and you won't have enough potentially enough cars going out into the market and people trying different things and different scenarios so i get it but this is probably one of the few games that i've been willing to get at three players a uh, minimum of three players is almost a non-starter for me and probably might be for you as well it's just one of those it's just a it's just a hard one to to manage so one last con would be the game instructions i they're not horrible they're not definitely not the worst i've ever had but i think they could have had a few more pictures and i know like there's some bgg forums that are you can go and download and print out better game rules and then if you go watch game in a nutshell's how to play i think he does a pretty good job of explaining the game and telling you a couple of nuances that aren't in the rule books like where to start out with the six dollars and such like that um so you know they're not the worst rules i've ever had but they're definitely not the best either um and i think there's a couple things that could be clarified around how to play the um the dealers and the the construction lines which you know the terminology they use i understand why they're using the terminology to keep it within the theme and everything but uh they could have just said, here's the car part. <laughs> Always needs to touch this. <laughs> Things like that. Um, but that would be my last con. So what are the pros of the game? Well, all in all, I I think it is well thought out. I don't know how long they play tested this. There's, I think the players balance themselves, so you don't really have to worry about the asymmetry of like one faction being better than the other. You know, I do like that. It's just everybody's playing the same puzzle. I like the fact that it's a strategic game. It It's not like, oh, this card came out and then it just completely destroys your plan and there's randomness and things. And I, I do like dice rolling games and dice truckers, but this one is definitely a, a long-term strategy game. And you can see what's happening when you're doing things with the technologies and the patents and where people are playing things. And so like in the game I played, it was, I could see that blue was going to come back 
out on the, the table at the last turn. And I wanted to be able to have the maximum number of patents for that so that I could push cars all the way up into the $6 per car selling range and then try to catch up in points. So I like that aspect. I also like the aspect of you've got this planning office and the sales and engineering track that creates um, where do you want to go first and when do you want to you know, jump in and be the first player so that you can like strike when Jamon was playing, he was able, he took first turn and then he went and sold a bunch of cars and that shot him up. And he was able to do that in like turn three, I think maybe, maybe turn two. It was, it was early on in the game and then the rest of us were playing catch up. So that understanding, do I want to go for patents and be able to put more um, parts in my factory or do I want to be first in sales? And, you know, I don't need to pick all the best pieces on that turn because I want to sell a bunch of cars that turn. I like that, that puzzle and being able to kind of strike when you want to strike. The other thing that I like, or they call them minimum specifications, and it's the patents that go in there. And once you have a couple of them, then you're going to have, you're going to have a minimum of speed. Nobody in the whole board is going to want anything unless you have at least one speed component in your car or the game may change and it, you may need design. You need, may need something better in your design or, your, or the reliability or the safety. And I'm looking down here in the range. So like that ratchets it up that you can't just go, well, I'm not going to worry about speed and design. I'm just going to worry about reliability, safety, and range. No, that, that's going to come into play later in the game. Now, did it really push the game forward? We all kind of had that. So some people could say like, that's a useless mechanic because you're already are there kind of at the beginning. But I kind of like the fact that it's just, it's a, it's a minimum, right? It becomes this like, Hey, I have to have this. And then you have another chart over here where it's your assembly that you have to take into consideration. How many cars can I sell? How many cars can I make? And you're going to want to be able to sell more and more. You only get to sell one car at the very beginning and you can go all the way up to five. So as more and more cars come out and there's a ton of cars that come out toward the end of the game, you want to be able to sell five cars every turn. So the faster you can do that, the better you're better off you'll be. However, it takes up room in your board. So the, the last pro I kind of have is this polyomino game that you're playing with the pieces and the factory. You feel like you've got a large factory and you fill that up, but then like all these other factory pieces that come home on the floor, it's like, it's smaller and it's tighter and you can't add as many um, components to it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then the fact that you don't have to pay for the pieces that go in your factory. I, that, I think that's very unique. Most of the time you're having to pay for things and it's, they're, they're limiting the resources you have by the money you have. This was like, if I want a new engine and if I want a new dealership and I, you just take all the components and you fill out your polyomino board. Now there's restrictions on your polyomino board, but I just thought it was real interesting that nobody was like, Oh, I can't afford this. And now I'm not going to be able to sell cars and I'm, I'm behind it. They took that away. I just, so the only money really is just to sell cars and get money. And then that's your score. So I thought that was real interesting. So the restriction ends up being the size of the polyominoes you're, you're trying to play and that each polyomino has a different color and a different hashtag that you have to puzzle out and connect to your assembly line, right? So that was a really neat puzzle. I, I really did enjoy it. And then we get into the weight rating. This is a 4.14 on BGG. Now, do I agree with this? It's absolutely over a four. <laughs> There's no question. To some people, maybe it's a five. Four and a half, you know, it always has to average out. So more people think it's a four than they think it's a five. I would say it is not as complex as Lisboa, and Lisboa is definitely on the higher side. I don't think, I think Kanban might be a little bit easier than this, but I like Kanban. So somewhere in that 4.25 range, I would, I would agree with it. it. It's a long game. You're not going to, you know, learn this real fast and play this in, you know, Two hours, I don't think. I mean, I think this is a, this is, is going to sit at the two and a half, three hour game, you know, with three or four people for sure. So, I think the 
the rating is probably on point. I would probably call it a 4.25 if I had to, uh, to pick or, or, you know, split hairs in that sense. So getting to the value rating, you've got $109 for Miniature Market and a couple of the online stores, $140 on eBay, and Spotter, I think, is $150. So don't spend $140 or $150 like somebody that won't be named, but I got it as a gift, so it was free to me, kind of. <laughs> So my value rating at, you know, $110, you'll get free shipping because of the cost of that. I, I like the game. If you like heavy, heavy games, if you don't mind kind of this bland appearance, you know, and you have three people to play with. This isn't a solo game. You're not going to be able to pick it up for that. And it's not even a two-player game, which to me, it kind of dings it a bit. I mean... I think you're getting what you pay for. There's a lot of thought that went into this game. I would say this is a three out of five for a normal person that likes heavyweight games. For splatter people, you know, this is probably a four out of five. Like, it's a good game. You, if, you know, the splatter communities, they're, they've already bought it. it not, it isn't going to matter. There's a very niche community that likes these. I was afraid of food chain magnet because I didn't want to play a game where you're going to lose in the first turn no matter what. But I really like this game. So, you know, for me, it has a, you know, I would want to say it's a four out of five value. But I realize that in general, it's going to be a three to a two and a half. Like anybody, you have to like four to five games. And then if you need it to be a good looking game, the value just keeps going down, right? So, I like the game. I'm going to say it's better, but in general, 3 out of 5, you're getting $100 worth of game because it's a lot of game. You're going to play it 3 or 4 hours. So, depending on if you look at games by how many times you play them, then the value may be less. If you look at like how many hours you're going to play the game when you do pick it out, then the value is going to be better. So, I know that's a wishy-washy answer, but it's kind of hard when you're like, I like, I like it, but at the same time, I realize it's not cheap. <laughs> so let's head on over to the BGG rating. So out with it. What is my final rating? I had a bunch of cons, not that many positives. So let's just get right to it, shall we? I really enjoyed playing this game. I enjoyed it at four players. I think three is a challenge trying to get it, you know, make sure you have three people. So I'll put that as a caveat. But for me personally, I really enjoyed this game. I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. I like the game. I want to recommend the game. I want to have people come and play the game with me. So I would like to be able to play it multiple times this week. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Got a lot of the games to play. However, I really enjoyed it. So that is my final answer. Well, let's get right back to it and we'll get you out of here. This has been a long video. So I hope you liked this. I've tried to do something a little bit different, mix things up, mix the camera angles up. I have no idea how it's all going to come back together, but if you liked it, comment down below. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate your support. And if you liked it enough, to even hit subscribe. We're going to be doing more like this. I'm just going to start making videos because I think they're fun. And no matter how stupid I am, maybe you'll come along for the ride. <laughs> anyway, just remember, no matter how you play, whether you play solo, with family or friends, enjoy whatever you bring to the table.